I got married and uh, had a, a wonderful daughter. Um, and you, you throw all that away when drugs come into picture because you lose everything. You know, you're not anybody. You, uh, everything in your life revolves around it. Uh, you're consumed by it. it. It changes everything you were meant to be. Um, you lose family, you lose, you just lose, you lose everything. Nobody wants to be a drug addict. Nobody wants to be a nobody or a loser. You never, you never wake up one morning and you, and you, you don't have a life or you don't have anything. I'm Jared Smith. I'm 45 years old. Uh, I'm from Loris. I didn't want to be me. Um, on the outside, I didn't even look good anymore. When it started, I, I looked like a pretty cool guy. But inside, I was no good. When you when you've been when you've had life multiple times and you never get it right, you never it never works out, no matter how hard you try. It just it just don't happen. And I didn't care if I lived or die. And it showed in the way I acted, it showed in the way I presented myself, the things I did. Just so beat down by this world and, and, and by all the, the judgment and the way they think, the way society thinks and, and views. And then they put you down and they, they, make you, they make you feel once you mess up or once you, once you lose something, you, society kills you. I mean, nobody's there to pick you back up. Nobody's there to... You don't have anybody. And when you don't have anybody, God's right there waiting to say, here you go, dude, I got you. Come on here, I'll show you where you belong. I'll show you who you are. I'll show you what you made of. I was uh, privileged enough to do his intake, and um, there's a part on our intake papers where it says, what do you wish to receive from free ministry? And uh, Jared was about as broken as anybody I'd ever seen come in. Um, there was no smile on his face whatsoever. Uh, anybody with any sense of spirit would know that he was just a very hopeless man. It was just like he was on his last leg of hope with the tiny little bit of hope that he could hold on to. And the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And precious Jared had a very sick heart. He had, he had lost hope in everything. He had lost his daughter. He had lost his wife. He had lost his life. I've had family that loved me and sent me everywhere in this world, done things for me, helped me, enabled me and uh, I was so self-centered and so caught up in who I was and everything about me and how I'd been done wrong in life that nobody or nothing mattered. When I came to free ministry, I didn't have anything. Nobody, nothing. Nothing. I had, a, I had a, a bag of clothes. I had sold everything I had for drugs. I came in and I didn't, I didn't know anybody or know anything, but through work and through Bible study and through, through just living together. You, you live here. You, you don't see each other for five hours and go about your business. You live with these men. So you learn inside and out. You can't hide who you are. You grow close. You confide. 
I was roommates with, with a guy that left Sean. Excellent guy, big guy. You know what I mean? Big guy, you might mess with Sean. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody mess with Sean. That's why I like you know what I mean? He's got my back. No, but uh <laughs> It's like the Bible says, I'm sharp as iron. He gave me some backbone as I gave him some Easy in this, you know what I mean? Like, man, oh man, slow down, don't kill this dude. <laughs> I mean, don't kill him. But, uh, he graduated and he's, he's moved on. And I just hope he's doing, still, still, still doing good. What's up, brother? I watched Carl come in. Uh, <laughs> that, with two bicycles, <laughs> not one, but two. <laughs> He's no always the bicycle man. He came in so timid. He came in so just, I don't know. It was he was different. Pretty much my answer, the answer I would give would be. Jesus, do that. <laughs> I got a chance, a blessing to watch God change God's life. Rapidly transformed. It's like he knew once he got here the hope that was placed within him whether it was a small seed or not that it was fixing to burst forth and he had the hope in what he thought he could hope in if that makes any sense at all. He began to find something inside of him that he had buried and thought was not there any longer and in, in that fact he he just began to reach out, be, become a part of the family, be a brother to the guys. I watched a smile come on his face, and I watched him just blossom and bloom and laugh, and even not him. There was not a person that would come in contact with Jared after a period of time, and I'm not talking about a long period of time. I'm talking about a short period of time, uh, that he couldn't make laugh. There was nobody that he would be around, even without his presence being there, that would go, Jared will make anybody's day good, because it's just who he is. He has such a joyful spirit about him. The Bible says that those who he has forgiven much, they love much. So my answer is not to you. My answer is not to Jim. My answer is not to this ministry, and it's not to these guys. It is to God Almighty himself because that's who I answer to every day because in the end that's who we stand before all alone. You can go to another alcohol and drug recovery that's not faith based and you can get recovery but you don't get deliverance. The only one that offers deliverance is Jesus Christ and that is the whole prefaces of free ministry. Yes, we would love for you to get absolutely free from alcohol and drugs but there's nothing that we desire more than for you to receive a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's a real Satan, there's real demons, and they're out to destroy you. And if we guard our eyes, we guard our ears, we guard our mouth, these are our gateways to our soul, then, then, then you can have deliverance. You can walk in deliverance the rest of your life. And I truly believe, and I say this to the guys all the time, if the devil could have took you out, he would have took you out. But God did not allow him to because he allowed you to make it here to receive him. Whether you receive him and reject him will be the deciding factor of the rest of your life. Ian leaves his family. He was here, he was here for a year too. So he knows the struggle. And that's where the respect comes from. He's not read a book to come trying to tell you something about it. He lived it every day, same way that we do. He 
those are classes on Friday nights. But you don't come to the altar and say, God, I need you to do this, 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 and this. Help me, help me, help me. You become something because of Jesus Christ. You don't need something or get something. That's not the gospel. You become something because of Jesus Christ. The gospel is transformation, meaning we were this way and now we're this way. So whatever time you need to get right up here and get rooted and grounded in Christ, make it freaking happen because you're under the grace of Almighty God. When, when he gets full, he gets full. It comes out, and everybody in there knows it. And you can feel the Holy Spirit in there. The psychiatrist, psychologist, it was all dry cups. They're saying, drink. I'm drinking, and it's dry. So if you're drinking from a dry cup, of course you're going to be thirsty. Jesus Christ says, if you would ask me for one drink, That's the difference in here and everywhere else. We get God here. We get truth here. But his mercy triumphs over judgment. Grace. Grace is the Father's power. Using his power, saying, here you go, son. Using his power to shape and mold your heart. And that's you. So the more, it's like, it's like, it's like he sculpted you and there's a big whoosh, tarp over and the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are inside and you're praying and releasing faith. I want you to picture yourself as he's like, Dick, Dick, Dick. And there's going to come a time, whatever that time is, because God's not bound by time, but whatever that time is, it's going to be, ta-da! Look at my son, Ian, and Ian comes out whoo, full of the Holy Spirit. Let's go, baby. Ah, be healed, be healed. <laughs> we get it. I mean, you're going you're gonna to get it, whether you want it or not. What you do with it's on you, but you're going to get it. Everybody talks about free ministry. It's always Jimbo, 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 Jimbo. Miss Lynn. I think it's even Jimbo's strong source. I'm talking powerhouse. To go into the hedges and highways and compel them to come into the house of God. The word compel, I looked it up, it says beg them. Have you begged someone lately to show them just how much and how real you believe in salvation and eternity? It's time. In their righteousness, they will be light great oaks that the Lord has planted for His own glory. I speak that over you Amen. tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water. She, she is the prayer warrior of the ministry. Whether you do or whether you don't, that's up to you. You're God and I trust you however you choose to do it. If I go out of this world without seeing them give their life to the Lord or come back to the Lord, that's on you and I'm good with that because I will go out believing that my prayer will be answered. I said, but I would really love to spend some time in Christ with my children before I die. And I got two of them right here. So I just want to give him all the praise and all the glory. I got, can I give just one more for these right here? I love her. I love him. I love his family. This is an answer to prayer too. Thank you, God. I believe it. I don't care. I thank you, God. God is moving. If you will allow him to just be God, he will do it. I stopped her one day. She was coming through the farm and she was driving. And just having one of my days, I said, Miss Lynn, pray for me. And it was, I'm talking probably 20, 30 feet from the car. You know, I'm not even like beside the car. I'm just, Miss Lynn, will you pray for me? <laughs> she stopped right then. Not another move, not the tires didn't roll anymore. And she prayed for me right then. 
that alone will teach you what it means to serve God. My life's not too busy for the other person in this world to where I'll pray for you when I get home or I'll pray for you when I write it down and think about it three days later. I'll pray for you right now because you're the most important thing in this world to me at this moment because I believe in Jesus Christ. God wouldn't have got to me without the raw of Jimbo. And that son of a gun, now watch this, watch this. Still got on the phone to call her to say that my drug tests were not correct, that they were false, and he just snorted one, one, maybe a half of the line of mouth. <laughs> just, uh, just one. What does that mean? Did you ask him for weed? Okay. I don't, want, I don't want to do this to you, bro. I'll get him on the phone for you. Get going. The Bible says we got a problem with a brother breaking up way my shirt. What did I do with it? What did I do with it, fellow? You said, here, you give it to the police. <laughs> I said, I don't want to touch this. I said, you go give it to the cops. So what did the cops say? I don't want, I don't want it. The cops wouldn't even take it. I said, man, that's the first time I've ever seen a cop that wouldn't take dope. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I had bet fans going into the attic in the condos. Man, I, I picked the closet out. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know what's weird about me, but that's what I did. Anybody else hiding in closets or bathrooms and smoke crack? Or oh, you think they shouldn't have done what we asked them not to do this morning in Bible study? Yeah, too. How, how much crack have you smoked? You know, like you jump starting the lighters for what reason? But Jimbo will definitely bet you see who you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll tell you who you are, too, real quick. You get your, your, your temple of the Lord, your temple of the Lord looks like a Marlboro company. You guys are taking cheap shots at me, got my helmet on, and I'm good. No, they're coming to the ministry. You ain't going to be busy. We all going to be busy. They ain't coming to see you, believe it or not. <laughs> they're coming to see me, too. So he's going to be too busy. We ain't done nothing since he got here. We're walking his dog. Give me a table to serve. I don't want to be around Jimbo. This place I don't deserve. I'm a rapper, too, dude. I don't want to yeah, rock. Good. Good mm. I loved you for a minute when I first met you. Once I got to know you, I didn't like you no more. Has anyone ever felt that way about me? Oh, come on, Jesus, help me. He told me one time how to move some dirt. And I knew he was wrong. I knew in my heart this man was wrong. You are, and I guess he knew that. I just had to bow heaven and put the dirt back, but but I had to do it his way. And it was a very good deal, but it, it ended up being a very learning lesson because it teaches us to respect authority. He, uh, it's not in the way that you would think. Gifts and, and love and all this is because it's, it's not what you're used to. It's not what you, you consider to be a gift because it's not how you want it, but it's how you need it. He reads that word with us every morning, 6.30. Whether you're there or not, and if you ain't there, somebody's coming to get you. Not everybody says anything good about him because not everybody gets it. He truly opens up everything he has and gives all he got. Hey man, Jerry, love you man. What are you doing up here? You got a family member here too. What are you doing? I wouldn't be here without God. All right. So you haven't been here? I wouldn't be alive today. I wouldn't be. <clears throat> wouldn't be anything today. Do you know God's going to save us? He saved the rest of us. You've seen a bunch of us get saved. We were worse than this. He's here to save your soul, right? You, you, you believe in Jesus? Are we dedicated to him? That's just for real stuff. It's that you can't fake, you can't play nothing. Hey man, I love you, man. Jesus. We minister, we intercede, we pray. Like we said before, we got going here. I asked most of you guys the first week how many y'all were so excited to be here. This time was just marvelous. Not one of them put their hand up. They said they all faced pretty big struggles in the first week while they were here, knowing that they were feeling uncomfortable. And I say good. Because you see, a lot of us don't get comfortable in sin. Yeah. And we get around the light. 
You see the light gets a little darkness. Because a lot of us had to go to jail and belong to get to the bottom of ourselves, Father God. And I'd be one of them. Many trips to that jailhouse, Father God. I want to thank you for setting me free. Because blue, the Lord set free, is free indeed, Father God. We thank you for setting us free, Father God. I want to thank you for all the congregation, my acts, Father God. The ones that are coming here. There's your good ones, Father God. There's leadership going on. There's things that are happening, Father God. There, yes, there's weapons that are formed against this ministry on a daily basis, but. One thing I can be thankful for is that they won't prosper against this one. We'll take a hit here. We'll take a hit there. And we sit back in the corner and say, all right, Mama, go get them. Yeah. I said this. God, if it's for me to enter this ministry or for me to cause one of your sheep to go astray, take me out of this place. And uh, I'm talking cold 30. It's going to be cold so well. Yeah, you know, we go down to Myrtle Beach and again, bring some guys back. You know what I mean? I, I have not gone fishing without bringing back a fish. I got lost. Someone help me back. All right. Heavenly Father, take me back. I'm lost. Lord Father God, help me with the Bible this morning because this is the book of life. This book right here will change you from the inside out. It might not happen overnight because Father God, it shouldn't happen to me and I'm still being fine-tuned after 20 years, still ain't happy the way I am. I want to be more like Jesus and less like Jim. And to people that don't get that in this world, because of how we live and how we view ourselves and what we do, that's an impact. But I'm glad that he never gave up because my life wouldn't be what it is today. He had given up. No. I had nowhere to turn, nowhere to run, nowhere to go. Nobody to call. Nobody would even answer. And you showed me and gave me an opportunity. You trusted me right out of the gate. It's like I walked in on a brand new slate that you didn't judge me. You didn't. You helped change my life, and I thank you for it. My name is Miss Grady Long, and I'm Jared Smith's mother. This has been a long time coming, but God has come through. I couldn't be any fuller with gratefulness, with thankfulness for the way that God has changed my son's life. He's a different man. What I want people to see is that there's hope. You can overcome these problems in life. Give us our strength, give us our wisdom and understanding and our abilities. Lead us in the right way and 
Lord, we, we pray for Uncle James and the new people here. We pray for this ministry. We pray for a revival in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. We're so grateful to be able to see him happy. He's never been happy. And now we can see him enjoying his life. <laughs> Being free. He's not bound by what you think or what that one thinks. God is able. And as a mother, I would say, don't ever give up. Even when it seems you've just got to throw your hands up, don't give up. As long as there's breath, there's hope. So encourage those that you love that are having a problem. Call unto me and I will answer thee. That's a tremendous promise in itself. But listen, then it says, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I prayed for Jared. I prayed for a godly son. I prayed for a son that was going to uh, be active, working for the Lord. But let me tell you something. The last half of that verse, God gave me more of a Jared than I even asked for. So don't cut God short. Let him bless you. He's willing and able. Amen. It's who we are. We're, we're, child, we're children of God, and without, without reading the Word, how do we know what He wants us to do? How do we know how to act and what to do and how to be, how to live? Because when we're out there living, we're living just like everybody else because that's what we think is right. But it ain't. Unless we do the way God tells us to do and totally take ourselves out of it, we're not winning. It's a peace inside of me that goes, <laughs> you know what, it's okay. If I'm picking up trash over the side of the road or if I'm running that piece of equipment, I'm the same guy doing it. You know what I mean? I'm the same dude, man. I don't gotta be running that one to be me. I'm still me right there, man. You know what I mean? I'm still me on that trash pile because as long as I do it to God, as long as I do it for Him, it don't matter. Every day, it don't matter, man. It don't matter if they see it, if they know it, it don't matter. It don't matter anymore. You work your whole life to try to get somewhere and it ain't nowhere when you even get there. You know what I mean? It's not even, it's nothing when you get there. There's no reward in it. There's no. What'd you do it for? You still can't sleep at night. You still can't do it. I mean, what'd you do it for? God gives you a peace that nobody else can. God gives you a security and a, a sense of being. You were told that tree's a maple tree. <laughs> That's just because somebody told you it's a maple tree. Somebody told you the apple tree is still going to be an apple tree to you. What does God tell you? What does God tell you? God speak to you in your heart. God to tell you. <laughs> You're good. God will take you from nothing. He said, the last will be first. <laughs> if you'll let him, if you'll let him, he'll put you first. Maybe not first in society eyes, but first inside yourself to where you know you're all right. You know where you're going, you know where you stand in Jesus Christ. His power, his, his, the way he'll take nothing and <laughs> make anything he wants to make out of it and do anything he wants to do with it. I mean, take me, nobody, nobody with nothing. After giving my life over to Lord Jesus Christ in a year's time, I got a family that I love. Me. I got a, I got a job and a life. And I got peace every day of knowing who I am and who I serve and who I belong to. He said, he'll never leave you for safety. My most favorite verse in the world is Joshua 1.9. He says, have I not commanded you? 
be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that's what I stand on every day. That's what I stand on every minute. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, God's got my back because I'm his son. I'm his child of his. And that's all the strength I'll ever need.